In this section, I am going to discuss how to find inverse functions. If you are given the equation of a function, here are the steps to find the inverse of a function. There are only two steps. First thing is you have to interchange x and y and then solve for y. This y over here will be the inverse of your function. So for example, we have f of x equals 2x minus 2. Our f of x is our y. So the first step is to interchange x and y. So x equals 2y minus 2. And next step is to solve for y. I will isolate the term involving y. So this becomes x plus 2 equals 2y. Divide both sides by 2 to get your y. And your y therefore is equal to x plus 2 all over 2. This is now your inverse function, f inverse of x. Let us draw the graphs of the two functions. To graph f of x equals 2, x minus 2, this is just a linear function, so therefore, we only need two points. So for those two points, I will get the x-intercept, so that would be 1, 0. And let's say if x is equal to 2, then y is equal to 2 as well. So these are our two points and we connect this with a line. This is now our line. Next, let us sketch the graph of the inverse function which is x minus 2 all over 2. Take note that I already have these two points for f so that means for the inverse I now have the points 0, 1 and 2, 2. When we interchange the coordinates, you will get the points for your inverse function. Let us just verify if x is equal to 0, 0 plus 2 over 2, yes, your y is equal to 1. And if x is equal to 2 here, 2 plus 2 over 2 is really equal to 2. So we have 0, 1 and 2, 2 as well. Our graph is this one. Let me just extend this. There. Notice that these two lines are symmetric with respect to the line y is equal to x. Let us get the domain of these two functions. Note that since both of them are just linear functions, their domains and their range are just equal to the set of real numbers. So here are the two graphs when it is drawn using the computer. So this verifies that our graph is really correct. Next, let us find the inverse of f of x equals 2x plus 1 over x minus 1. First, I will set my f of x to be my y. Next, I will interchange x and y. To solve for y, we will get rid of the denominator. We can do that by cross-multiplying. We have x times y minus 1 is equal to 2y plus 1. I will distribute x so that I can get all the terms involving y. I have xy minus x is equal to 2y plus 1. I will collect all the terms involving y on the left-hand side. So I have xy minus 2y. And then all the terms which does not involve y, I will put it on the other side. So this is x plus 1. The reason why I collected all the terms involving y is so that I can factor out my y. And now I can divide both sides by x minus 2. So our y is equal to x plus 1 over x minus 2. This is your inverse function. Let us graph this two function. So first we have to get the, the domain of f of x. We still cannot get the range of f of x from here. The domain is equal to 
all real numbers except 1 because we have a denominator of x minus 1. Our intercepts, our x-intercept is, we set the numerator to be equal to 0, which means that x is negative 1 half. For our y-intercept, we set x to 0. That means that your y is equal to negative 1. For our asymptotes, what would be your horizontal asymptote? Notice that the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of your denominator. So therefore, our horizontal asymptote is y is equal to the leading coefficient of numerator, which is 2, over the leading coefficient of the denominator, which is equal to 1. For the vertical asymptote, we get it from the denominator. The vertical asymptote is the value where the denominator is equal to 0. So that's x is equal to 1. And then we have our table of signs. I have here the factors of the numerator and denominator of f of x. This will be 0 at negative 1 half. This one would be 0 at x is equal to 1. Everything to the right of this is positive. Everything to the right of 1 is positive. And therefore, here it's positive, negative, positive. For this one, the domain of f inverse is everything except 2 because we have a denominator of x minus 2. Recall that the domain of f inverse is the range of f. So from here, we can say that the range of f is everything except 2. Here, it will just become y. y not equal to 2. Also, the range of f inverse is the domain of f. Since the domain of f is x not equal to 1, here it will be y not equal to 1. Because we are talking about the range, so therefore it's wiped. For our intercepts, our x-intercept is negative 1. Our y-intercept is negative 1 half. Note that this is not so surprising at all. Look at this. The y-intercept of f inverse is the x-intercept of f and the y-intercept of f is the x-intercept of f inverse. Because remember, the x and y coordinates will just be flipped if you're looking at its inverse. And also, the horizontal asymptotes and vertical asymptotes will also be interchanged. Here, this horizontal asymptote will now become its vertical asymptote. It will become x is equal to 2, and this vertical asymptote of x equals 1 will become a horizontal asymptote, y equals 1. The x and y will also be interchanged. Let us verify that. The, is the vertical asymptote equal to x equals 2? Yes, you have a denominator of x minus 2 here. Is the horizontal asymptote y is equal to 1? Yes. The degree of the numerator and denominator are both equal to 1, and therefore, the horizontal asymptote is y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator, which is 1, over the leading coefficient of the denominator, which is 1. Next, we'll have our table of values. This one will be 0 at negative 1. This one will be 0 at 2. Everything to the right of negative 1 is positive. Everything to the right of 2 is positive. Let us now sketch the graph of these two functions. Let us now sketch the graph of f. Our x-intercept is negative 1 half 0. This point, y-intercept of negative 1. You have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 2. This is y equals 2. And we have a vertical asymptote of x equals 1 x equals 1 is this line, and we are now ready to sketch the graph. 
These are the intervals that we obtained earlier. On the interval negative infinity to negative one half, your f of x is always positive. Notice that you have a horizontal asymptote here. So therefore, it will look either like this or like this. However, you already have a point here below. So that means that you will start from this point. So I have this one. Next, on the interval negative 1 half to 1, this interval, you are always negative. Note that here you have a vertical asymptote. That means that you will either be like this or like that. Because you will avoid this vertical asymptote. How will our graph look like? This part or this part? You are always negative, so therefore it cannot be this one. We have to choose this one. Also, you already have a clue because you have to pass through these points. And lastly, on the interval 1 to infinity, this one, you are always positive. Note that on this interval 1 to infinity, you have a horizontal and a vertical asymptote. So that means you're either like that or like this. However, you are always positive, so you cannot have this because this one would have negative values. So we choose this one. That's the graph of F. For F inverse, you can already have a guide here because everything will just be interchanged. Y intercept would be negative one half x-intercept is negative 1. Okay, for the function f inverse, your y-intercept is negative 1 half. So that is this point. And your x-intercept is negative 1. Your vertical asymptote is x equals 2. This is your x equals 2 and your horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. This is your y equals 1. Alright, let us proceed. On the interval negative infinity to negative 1, you are always positive. So this is negative infinity to negative 1. You have a horizontal asymptote of phi equals 1 here and you're always positive so therefore it's, it's going to look like this next on the interval negative 1 remember this is negative 1 negative 1 to 2 you are negative and you have a vertical asymptote here There you go. And lastly, on 2 to infinity, you are always positive. 2 to infinity, you have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1 and vertical asymptote of x equals 2. So therefore, it's going to be like this one. Next, let us find the inverse of this function. My y here is equal to square root of x plus 2 and then interchange x and y and solve for y. However, notice that y equals x squared minus 2 is not a one-to-one -one function, correct? It cannot happen that the graph of a one-to-one -one function would have an inverse, which is not one-to-one. -one. In order to make this one-to-one, -one, we have to get the range of f over here. If you look at the graph of f of x, this is the graph of y equals square root of x, but shifted two units to the right. Because I have here x plus 2, but this is square root of x all right how does y equals square root of x look like 
it's like a parabola but only half of it. You have 1, 1, 4, 2, and so on. This is the graph of y equals square root of x. So therefore, this graph of y equals square root of x plus 2, you just shift it two units to the left. So this point will now go to negative 2, 0, 1, 1 will now go to this point. And 4, 2 will now go to 2, 4. So this green part is now my y equals square root of x plus 2. Notice here that the domain of f is x greater than or equal to negative 2 because x plus 2 should be greater than or equal to 0. From the graph, we can see that the range of f is equal to y greater than or equal to 0. This is now telling us that the domain of f inverse should be x greater than or equal to 0. It has to be non-negative because the domain of f inverse is equal to the range of f. So therefore, here we have the condition that x is greater than or equal to 0. How will the graph of y equals x squared minus 2 with x greater than or equal to 0 look like? y equals x squared minus 2. It's the graph of y equals x squared but shifted down. So that's this one. Something like this. However, we only want x to be greater than or equal to 0. So that means I will now remove this one. There you go. This is now the graph of your x squared minus 2, but x is greater than or equal to 0. Notice that these two graphs over here are symmetric with respect to the line y is equal to x, correct? So that's it. The inverse of square root of x plus 2 is x squared minus 2, but x should be greater than or equal to 0. And this is exactly what we obtained earlier, this graph. This purple graph is your y equals square root of x plus 2. And this green graph over here is your y equals x squared minus 2, x greater than or equal to 0. Let us recall that a function will only have an inverse function if it is 1 to 1. Because if we have a function which is not 1 to 1, it is possible to have two elements in the domain and it will go to one element in your range. Let's call this A. If you will form the inverse of this one, this direction is from here to here, this set to this set. For the inverse, you will now have, you will start from here and then it will go to x1 and then x2. And this is not a function. This is just an inverse. We call this inverse relation, not an inverse function. That is the reason why only one-to-one -one functions have inverse functions. Going back to our function y is equal to x squared, we know that this is not one-to-one -one because the graph is just a parabola. And if you do the horizontal line test, it will intersect the graph at two points. We want to restrict the domain of this function so that it will be a one-to-one -one function. So if you have a parabola and you want to restrict it, you can restrict it on its vertex. What do I mean by that? This graph is symmetric with respect to the line x equals 0, correct? The y-axis. So you can either choose this part or this part. If you choose this part over here, what is the domain there? The domain is... 0 to infinity. If you choose this part, the domain is negative infinity to 0. So you can restrict the graph. You either restrict it here, negative infinity to 0. If that is the case, you will get this graph. Or you can restrict it here so that if that's the case, you will get this graph. Suppose I chose 
0 to infinity. I restricted it where x is greater than or equal to 0. This is now a 1 to 1 function. Let us find the inverse of f of x equals x squared where x is greater than or equal to 0. So first, let us just not mind this x greater than or equal to 0. We have y is equal to x squared. So let's interchange x and y. And therefore, y is supposedly y is equal to plus or minus square root of x. Which one should we choose here? Because we have, now we will consider this x greater than or equal to 0. This x greater than or equal to 0 tells us that the domain of f is 0 to infinity. So therefore, the range of f inverse is also equal to 0 to infinity. In other words, your y has to be greater than or equal to 0. If y is greater than or equal to 0, that means that we choose positive square root of x for y to be positive. So now what is the graph of y equals square root of x? That's just this one. There you go. This one will actually extend because that's y equals x squared. So this is the graph. Moreover, I can also obtain this if you just reflect the graph of y equals x squared, x greater than or equal to 0 with respect to the line y is equal to x. So just like this one. This is the line y is equal to x. So in general, if you have a parabola, we can always restrict the domain and find its inverse. The secret there is to determine its vertex because for any parabola, you can always restrict it either this half or this half. So in general, what is the formula for this? Let's say that the vertex is at hk. You can either restrict it at negative infinity to h or h to infinity. Okay, so in this case, your quadratic function is already expressed in vertex form. So that means that your vertex is at 2, negative 3. And it's going upwards. Let me just sketch that. 2, negative 3, and we know that it's going upwards. So suppose that I will take this part over here. I will restrict it at... 2 to infinity. So therefore, my graph, this one, okay, that one. This is now just my graph. x minus 2 squared minus 3, but x is greater than or equal to 2. How do we get its inverse? We have y equals... First, let us interchange x and y. Let us solve for y. So we have y minus 2 equals plus or minus square root of x plus 3. Let us determine later on which one to choose. So this means that y is equal to 2 plus or minus square root of x plus 3. This is where the domain would come in. For f, its domain is 2 to infinity and that tells us that 2 to infinity is also the range of f inverse. So that means y should be greater than or equal to 2. So therefore, we choose plus because if you have 2 plus square root of something, it's always greater than or equal to 2. What if you chose x less than or equal to 2? If x is less than or equal to 2, then you will have to choose minus here. Let us sketch the graph. Our vertex is at 2, negative 3, something like this. And therefore, for our inverse, since I have 2, negative 3, I have my point negative 3, 2. I will reflect my graph along the line y is equal to x there. So my graph would look like this. This is y equals 2 plus 
square root of x plus 3. This is how the graph would look like if it's drawn in a computer.